two alien worlds united in one blood-soaked struggle across the war-strewn depths of space. The alien versus the predator. But before AVP was part of the parlance of our times, these two species ruled their own respective corners of the pop culture galaxy. So how exactly did these uniquely deadly creatures from two distinct franchises come head to head? Stay tuned to find out how a series of counterculture comic books led to the birth of a new, united universe, and how one of the most infamous battles in video game history brought about a rebellion. Following the groundbreaking success of their own respective titles, the Alien vs. Predator comic series began with a three-part prequel presented throughout the course of Dark Horse Presents, issues 34 and 36, from November of 1989 to January of 1990. A one-shot reprint and a four-issue miniseries immediately followed. Penned by Dark Horse editor Randy Stradley, the original Alien vs. Predator series tells the story of a farming colony on the star-flung planet Ryushi, caught between the Predators and their xenomorph prey. Machiko Noguchi, the colony's administrator and lone survivor, finds an unlikely ally in the Predator Elder known as Broken Tusk, a plot point that echoed the somewhat noble climax of Predator 2. Thanks to the impact of this first Alien vs. Predator miniseries, the franchise crossover enjoyed continued success through the turn of the century. The very first Alien vs. Predator video game was published in 1993 by Activision for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Set in the year 2493 on the fictional planet Vega 4, Alien vs. Predator took a cue from the comics and put the player in control of the Predator as the game's heroic protagonist, pit against seemingly endless waves of xenomorphs. The game was developed by Jerudan, a Japanese video game publisher who'd actually developed the first RPG to hit the Super Famicom in 1991, GD Lean. This first Alien vs. Predator was a side-scrolling beat-em-up with arcade sensibilities akin to titles like Double Dragon or Final Fight. That same year, a platformer version of the game known as Alien vs. Predator The Last of His Clan was developed for the Nintendo Game Boy by Ask Kodansha. Capcom took this idea a step further in 1994 with their arcade release of Alien vs. Predator, which pit up to three players as one of four characters, two humans and two predators, against a horde of Xenos. Players were stoked to see a cybernetically enhanced Major Dutch Schaefer back in action, along with Lieutenant Lin Kurosawa, who was an obvious send-up to fan favorite Machiko. Capcom had already established themselves as masters of the side-scrolling beat-em-up genre. Alien vs. Predator was no exception. To this day, aliens and arcade fans alike regard it as a coin-op classic. But later that year, Atari would publish a title that would change the face of sci-fi shooters as the world knew them. Alien vs. Predator by Rebellion Developments hit streets in October of 1994 on the Atari Jaguar. Released in 1993, the Jaguar was the first 64-bit gaming system, and was the last console from an American company until the arrival of the Xbox in 2001. Rebellion was established in 1992 by brothers Chris and Jason Kingsley, and their first titles included 1993's Eye of the Storm for Amiga and DOS, and the Jaguar remake of the 1991 Atari Lynx racing title, Checkered Flag. Their revolutionary take on Alien vs. Predator was a survival horror FPS that featured three distinct campaigns utilizing different playstyles. An alien, a predator, or human Private Lance Lewis of the Colonial Marines. Alien vs. Predator was extremely loyal to the franchise, and by far Jaguar's most successful title. But it couldn't save that system from extinction in 96. 1995 marked the arrival of Aliens, a comic book adventure, a point-and-click adventure game for PCs from developer Cryo and publisher Mindscape. Previously part of the Learning Company and currently affiliated with EA, Mindscape had received numerous accolades in the early 80s for its publishing of the innovative Macintosh adventure games Deja Vu and Shadowgate. Then, in 1996, Probe Entertainment, who had worked on the franchise for the various adaptations of Alien 3, stepped back into the limelight with Alien Trilogy for PlayStation, Sega Saturn, and PC. Probe had been acquired the previous year by publisher Acclaim Entertainment, and was well known for their development of Mortal Kombat 1 and 2 for the Sega Mega Drive. Alien Trilogy was based on the stories of the first three Alien films, and although derivative of classic FPS titles like Doom, it was well received by old-school shooters and die-hard fans of the series. 
Ultimately, Alien Trilogy served another goal. Tell the story so far to a new generation of bug hunters and pave the way for the next franchise blockbuster. Alien Resurrection opened November 26, 1997. Jean-Pierre Junet, who'd stunned the world with partner Marc Caro in the visually provocative The City of Lost Children in 1995, directed a script written by a young Joss Whedon. 200 years after the events of Alien 3, scientists create a clone of Ellen Ripley from her DNA, conveniently taken moments before her death, in an effort to extract and cultivate the alien queen gestating inside her. Introduce a ragtag band of mercenaries led by Ron Perlman to the mix, and you've got an accident waiting to happen literally and figuratively. Alien Resurrection proved to be the least successful film in the Alien franchise in terms of domestic box office, but the art house sensibilities of the film's French director found it a foothold internationally, where it managed to make up for ticket sales lost in the States. Aliens Online, an early first-person MMO for PC from developer Mythic Entertainment, swept the World Wide Web in 1998 for about $9.95 a month. Then Rebellion returned to the fray in 1999 with Aliens vs. Predator for PC and Macintosh. A spiritual successor to their first AVP title, this iteration was likewise a first-person shooter with three individual campaigns, but the introduction of a competitive multiplayer made it a standout in the series. GamePro Magazine went so far as to call it, quote, the most frightening game since Half-Life. Bold words in the burgeoning days of the next generation. The follow-up, Aliens vs. Predator 2 was developed by Monolith Productions and released by Sierra in 2001. The year 2000 heralded the release of an incredibly frightful adaptation of Alien Resurrection on the PlayStation console developed by Argonaut Software. True pioneers of 3D gaming, Argonaut had famously developed the Super FX chip for the SNES and three games incorporating that new tech. Fox's Terrible 2 would journey back to consoles in 2003 with the real-time strategy Alien vs. Predator Extinction by Zono Incorporated for the Xbox and PS2. Alien and Predator would finally battle on the big screen in 2004 in AVP Alien vs. Predator. Written and directed by Paul W.S. Anderson, the man who'd notoriously had his way with the Resident Evil franchise, the film didn't follow the plot or tone of the Dark Horse comic books or any of the games that followed but it did feature the first fully animatronic alien, courtesy the Academy Award-winning special effects company Amalgamated Dynamics. AVP was technically impressive, but critically disappointing. Love it or hate it, AVP was the highest grossing film among Predator and Alien franchises at the worldwide box office, and provided enough mojo to keep the xenomorph clawing its way well into the 21st century. Tune in next week for the triumphant conclusion to our epic look at the Aliens franchise. And if all else fails, follow me on Twitter at Chris Lockie or check out my own channel at youtube.com forward slash Jabberlockie.